I am Hiroshi Yamaguchi from the Nara National Research Institute for Cultural Properties, abbreviated to NNRICP. I am a researcher in the Archaeological Operations Division of this institute. I specialize in archaeology, mainly in the research, development and popularization of archaeological sites and research methodology. Today, I'd like to give you a lecture on a simple and handy way to record cultural properties by using 3D measurements and cameras. I have been conducting research on archaeological sites in Japan, Russia, Mongolia, Uzbekistan, Indonesia and India. This is a view of Borobudur in Indonesia. Based on the idea of valuing the relationships with my counterparts and colleagues, especially overseas, I also focus on sharing the knowledge of 3D measurement techniques that we use in our projects with other researchers. The Nara National Research Institute for Cultural Properties, also called Nabunkan or NNRICP in short, is an affiliated institute focused on the comprehensive research of cultural properties. The NNRICP works every day on the excavation, research, conservation and presentation of historical remains and cultural properties. This here is a chart showing the organization structure of our research institute. The section I am in is the Archaeological Research Methodology section, which is a part of Archaeological Operations. At the Archaeological Research Methodology section, which I am a part of, we handle the research of archaeological sites and their survey methods, and the development and application of research technology for cultural properties. We are also seeking to promote the spread of research technology and methods for cultural properties. Recently, we have been focusing our efforts on the digital recording of archaeological sites, structural remains and artefacts, as well as archaeological prospection. Let me introduce a part of our research. On the left, are our recent efforts involving the use of a laser measuring device called LIDAR to quickly measure the topography of archaeological sites. On the right is SFM MVS, a technology that can take 3D records with only a camera, a PC and software without using a specialized device. This is a picture from an archaeological prospection. This method can check the conditions under the ground without destroying archaeological sites. Underground surveys using GPR or ground penetrating radar is a method of surveying underground conditions non-destructively. In addition, most of the recording methods of cultural properties described above can be adopted by many research institutes and individuals. Here, at the NNRICP, we hold workshops regarding record keeping for local government staff in charge of cultural properties across Japan. Workshops are not only held in Japan, but also overseas to spread research methods. The slide shows a workshop held in Mongolia. These are participants in the workshop held in August 2018 at the National Museum in Indonesia. Today, I will talk about methods to create 3D documentation, as shown in the images. The one on the left is a survey drawing, and the one on the right is a 3D digital image. Now, let's talk about 3D recording. As you may all know, we record information in various situations involved in cultural properties research, including excavations, preservation treatments, 
studies and utilization of research. This shows a flowchart of records in a typical archaeological survey. The recording of cultural properties is vital in every stage. The objects subject to 3D documentation in the cultural property field are diverse, ranging from a 7mm wide indentation left by unhulled rice on a shard of pottery to an entire archaeological site. First, I would like to talk about an archaeological site in Mongolia as an example. This is an artifact excavated from an archaeological site in Mongolia. Since this artifact has an extremely complex shape, in this case, 3D recordings are a useful method to record it. This shows the interior of the grave where this artifact was found. Not only can an artifact be three-dimensionally recorded, but also the entire archaeological site. Here is a portion of the 3D record. Even the wall paintings that were drawn on both sides of the passageway have been recorded. The record of this archaeological site has been created using a 3D scanner. The scanner was placed at intervals, like in the above figure. Where you can see concentric circles are the photographed points. By collecting fine measurements like this, detailed data of the wall paintings can be gathered. This is a map showing the interior development plan that was created of the tomb, and the 3D model of the excavated artifacts. Next, let's take a look at methods to take 3D recordings of the topography of the entire archaeological site. Here is a topographical map created from a drone image of the topographic exterior of the grave in Mongolia, which you saw in the previous slides. As you can see, a total 3D recording from the artifacts to the archaeological site can be made. In addition, it is also important to record them in a systematic manner. Of course, 3D recording of archaeological sites is possible too. Although this is not a 3D recording, another effective method of recording is to record the landscape of the archaeological site via panoramic photography using the camera function. A 3D model can be made from an image taken by a drone. This is a picture of an entire archaeological site recorded via SFM MBS, based on a photo image taken by a drone. A 3D model of the surrounding topography of an archaeological site can be created from an image that was taken using a drone. A machine called LiDAR is used when implementing a topographic survey and recording of an entire archaeological site. LiDAR is a tool to use in 3D measuring by installing onto a car, robot or aeroplane. By using it like a camera, it can measure an extensive area in a short time. This is a scene from a topographic survey using LiDAR. Topographic surveys can be done while walking the surroundings of an archaeological site. This is the LiDAR measurement analysis result of the top of the hill in the previous slide. A wide area can be recorded just by walking and measuring for about five minutes. Although there are trees on site, they can be deleted on the computer. This is a 3D model of the archaeological site on top of the previous hill. A 3D model was made from images taken by a digital camera. 3D models are compatible with GIS, or Geographic Information System, such as QGIS and can be applied to a map like this. Now, 
QGIS, formerly known as Quantum GIS, is an open source GIS software that has viewing, editing, and analysis functions for GIS. Although free, it is equipped with functionality and operability that is on a par with non-free or expensive GIS software like the famous ArcGIS. You can download QGIS from the internet. This is a 3D record of the archaeological site from the previous slide, and we can see the shape and texture of each and every rock that was present. Additionally, SFM-MBS is an effective method as a way to measure not only cultural properties on land, but underwater archaeology, like in this photograph. Furthermore, from old aerial photographs from about 80 years ago, the topography of that time period can be reproduced in 3D. Next, let's take a look at examples of 3D recordings of artefacts. This here is a Japanese cultural property called Netsuke, which is a carved toggle used to tether a small container, a cord weight, that functions like a button. Even such a finely detailed design can be recorded in 3D. Here are coins excavated from an archaeological site. By removing the surface colour to decipher the patterns on the coins, their shape can be accurately visualised. By doing so, detailed differences between similar coins can be easily observed, such as how the letters were inscribed and the traces from the coin-making process. Even smaller traces like pottery patterns, observations and records can be made for each and every object. Here is an impression of rice hulls made inside a pot. Even this can be recorded using the SFM MVS that you will all be learning. 3D recordings that can minutely record these patterns are highly effective in recording large stone statues. This is the Buddha statue carved on a rock face, an important cultural property that is located in Toyama Prefecture, Japan. On the left is the current statue, and on the right is shown the results of the 3D recording. Even parts that are hard to observe with the naked eye, due to its large size, can be observed. Additionally, by having 3D records of cultural properties collected before disasters like earthquakes, fire hazards, floods, etc., they become important documents for restoration in case of damage due to disaster. As you can see from this case, having a 3D recording of an archaeological site made from rock and brick becomes one important source of information for restoration in times of disaster. This image highlights the carving depth on a stone. It is possible to use 3D recording to highlight the patterns of an artefact even more. Highlighting the patterns makes it effective in decoding hard-to-read inscriptions on stone monuments. Additionally, 3D recordings are effective in recording cultural properties such as hangi, which means printing wood blocks. Of course, various other artifacts can also be 3D recorded. As you can see, a photo of an artifact in its entirety is required for 3D documentation but the photographing itself can be automated. An artefact is placed on a stand with a rotating base underneath, and the camera is set up to automatically release the shutter periodically. Since the artefact will automatically rotate on the base, 
you can take a 360 degree photograph. As you can see, it is now possible for various cultural properties to be recorded using SFM MBS. For the next session, we'll be taking a look at how to create a 3D image using SFM MBS.